Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and the SEC is now investigating whether hedge funds and other short sellers used illegal insider information to short stocks. In today's video, I'll explain what's being investigated in a way that you can understand it. So let's get into it! All right, before we get into the SEC investigation, I just want to give you a quick update on the markets with some other news, and we'll start with the Treasury yields. The U.S. 10-year Treasury yield took a slight dip on Wednesday, which was good for the markets, although most economists think this will continue to rise here shortly. Now, unfortunately, the 2-year slash 10-year yield inversion has continued to worsen, and it is now sitting at 0.04. Keep in mind that whenever this drops below zero, that has been a 100% accurate indicator that a recession will start sometime in the next 12 to 18 months. So we are days away from this yield inversion dropping below zero, which means we are days away from this indicating a recession starting somewhere between April and October of 2023. Now, as we all know, the Fed is raising interest rates in order to fight inflation, and that is what's causing this yield curve to invert. Now, currently, the CME futures are pricing in a 67% chance that there will be a 50 basis point rate hike in May, and only a 33% chance that it will be a 25 basis point rate hike in May. So the markets are pricing in a 67% chance that the Fed is going to do a 50 basis point rate hike, which is larger than their normal 25 basis point rate hike. And if the Fed actually does that, that's going to cause more downward pressure on the stock market. Now on Wednesday, we do have the consumer spending index numbers coming out. And this is the Fed's pre preferred inflation gauge. And so the Fed is really going to be using the numbers on Thursday to determine how much they're going to raise interest rates. So the numbers coming out on Thursday could move the market significantly if they're showing inflation is much higher than expected. And how the Fed fights inflation is now the number one concern for investors. In fact, investors now believe the biggest threat to the stock market is a Fed misstep, meaning the Fed doesn't raise interest rates fast enough or they raise interest rates too fast. 46% of those surveyed said a Fed misstep could derail the markets, while 33% said inflation could derail the markets. And we should get information on both of those on Thursday. So keep your eye on the markets Thursday morning when the Consumer Spending Index comes out because this will have a major effect on the stock market on Thursday. The Wall Street Journal released a news article today that said big stock sales are supposed to be a secret. The numbers indicate they aren't. Share prices fall ahead of 58% of large sales, a Wall Street Journal analyst find, and regulators are investigating. Now this all has to do with something called block trades. So before I get into this article and explain what the SEC is investigating, let me go over a few definitions on what block trades are so that will help you better understand the article and the SEC investigation. So a block trade is a large privately negotiated securities transaction. Block trades are arranged away from the public markets, that is on the dark pools, to lessen the effect on a securities price. They're usually carried out by hedge funds and institutional investors via investment banks and other intermediaries. Now let me get into the block trade example and then I'll go back and explain a little bit better about what a block trade is. So in this example, a hedge fund wants to sell 100,000 shares of a small cap company near the current market price of $10. Well, this is a million dollar transaction on a company that may only be worth a few hundred million. So the sale would probably push the price down significantly if this were entered onto the open market. Moreover, the size of the order means it would be executed at progressively worse prices after exhausting demand at the $10 asking price. So essentially what would happen is if a very large order was put out on the open markets and this was a sell order, the price of that stock would start going down and down and down and down and down. And the reason is you have a certain number of people willing to buy at 10. Well, you continue to have a huge amount of selling pressure. Now the price drops down to 990, 980, 970, 950. And the price just keeps dropping until this million dollar transaction is finished and all of the shares have been sold. 
Now, if that were to happen, hedge funds would see slippage, that is the price dropping, on the order, and other market participants might pile on shorting the stock based upon the price action and forcing the price down even further. Now, of course, this would be really bad for the person that wants to sell this very large order because it means by the time they're done, they may end up with an average fill price of $9 even though the stock is trading at $10. So to avoid this, the hedge fund can contact a blockhouse that is an investment bank for help. Now, the blockhouse staffers or the investment bank would break up the large trade into manageable chunks. For example, they might split the block trade up into 50 offers of 2,000 shares each posted by a different broker to further disguise their origin. Again, like that Wall Street Journal article said, this is supposed to be a secret, and we'll get into why in just a minute. Now, alternatively, a broker could find a buyer willing to buy all 100,000 shares at a price arranged outside of the open market. And this would typically be another institutional investor or another large investment bank. Okay, so that's why somebody might want to use a block trade. Now let's get into how this actually works. So we already talked about how a bulk-sized sell order placed on the open market would have an outsized effect on the share price. It would push the share price down significantly. In contrast, while a block trade negotiated privately will often provide a discount to the market price for the buyer, that means let's say the stock was trading at $10, the seller would contact the investment bank and the investment bank would say, okay, look, I'm willing to buy this at $9.90. And the person trying to sell these would say, okay, that's fine with me because if we go to the open market, we're probably going to get an average fill of $9. I'd rather sell it to you for $9.90 even though it's currently trading at 10. So the person selling is willing to do that. And now the investment bank takes on all the risk. Now, the investment bank's goal here is to take these stocks that they bought for $9.90, which have a market value of $10, and their goal is to essentially offload these in really small portions to a whole bunch of different investment banks for around $9.95. And that way, the investment bank is now taking on the risk of this large block order. He's making money by buying them at a deep discount and then selling them to a whole bunch of smaller places for a slightly higher price, more than what they paid for it. And then the other places are happy to buy those because they're getting them at a discount to market price. So ultimately, this is a win-win-win for everybody involved if it works properly. Now notice, the buyer will not inform other market participants about the additional supply until the transaction has been publicly recorded. Now what that means is whenever you do a trade on a dark pool, the information still has to be publicly reported. Sometimes after hours, you see these huge spikes in prices that last a fraction of a second. You're like, whoa, what was that? You might have a stock that closed at $10 and it shows that the price jumped up to 11 and then immediately back down to 10. And you see this huge, like tall candle out of nowhere. And you're like, what in the world is that? Well, that is somebody who did a dark pull order earlier in the day recording that order after hours. They record it after hours so that they don't affect the share price. And that's all that is. So whenever you see a sudden, immediate, big spike up or spike down in price, followed by the share price immediately going back to what it was at, that is an investment bank recording an order that was previously agreed upon uh, and they just have to record the dark pull order. So they do it after hours, not to affect the share price. So that's what that is. Now, this is important. Block trades not yet publicly disclosed are considered material non-public information, also known as insider information. And the financial industry's self-regulatory organization, FINRA, prohibits the disclosure of such information as front-running. Now, front running is a term you might have heard about before. Front running essentially means that somebody gets inside information about a particular trade and then they go and place an order ahead of that trade being filled. Let's say they have insider information that a large sell order is about to take place. They might go and short the stock or buy a put option knowing that's going to cause downward pressure on the share price. Or alternatively, they might get insider information that a large buy order is about to be placed. They might go buy the shares ahead of that order or buy a call option so that they can make money on the share price going up as this large buy order is placed. That is called front running and it is illegal. 
Now, block trading facilities and block houses are specialized intermediaries that can facilitate block trades. Typically, these are large investment banks. Block houses are departments within brokerages that operate dark pools, that is, private exchanges where large buy and sell orders can be matched out of the public view. Again, you want to do this out of the public view so that you're not having a serious effect on the stock price. That's why you can't do this on the open market. You've got to do this privately, and anytime you make a private transaction between a buyer and seller outside of the open market, that is called a dark pool transaction. Block houses can also break up large trades on public markets, that is the open market, in order to conceal the scope of the additional supply. For example, by placing numerous iceberg orders. Essentially what that means is, let's say they buy these million shares or 100,000 shares or whatever it is, instead of going and selling all those right away in the open market, they might sell them say over the course of two weeks in much smaller transactions so that they're not having a negative effect on the share price. Okay, so that's how it's supposed to work. Now the big takeaways are that this is regulated by FINRA. If anybody breaks rules in FINRA, then the SEC investigates. Another big takeaway is that this is secret insider information, which means it's not publicly available. It is material information, which means if anybody trades on this insider information, it is illegal trading. Also know that illegally trading on this information is known as front running. All right, now that you know the terminology, let's get back to the article. So this whole investigation started because for years, people noticed that something really strange kept happening on Wall Street. Before a big shareholder could carry out plans to sell this large amount of stock in this block order, the price dropped. It was as if other investors knew what was coming. Now these transactions, known as block trades, are supposed to be a secret between the selling shareholders and the investment banks they hire to execute the trades. But a Wall Street Journal analysis of nearly 400 such block trades over three years indicates that information about the sales routinely leaks out ahead of time, a potentially illegal practice that costs the sellers millions of dollars and benefits banks and their hedge fund clients. The journal's analysis covering 393 block trades between 2018 and 2021 found that 58% of the time, the share price declined in the trading session immediately beforehand, controlling for the performance of peer companies. Of the 268 trades for which the journal was able to determine how much the banks paid, the sellers would have received $382 million more if the stocks had performed in line with the benchmark, or about $1.4 million per trade. In other words, if hedge funds really are getting this information ahead of time and they are front running these, that means that for each trade, hedge funds are making on average a $1.4 million profit each trade for front running these block trades. And of course, when the SEC fines are a mere $100,000 or even half a million dollars and you're making $1.4 million per transaction, who cares, right? Just keep doing it. Now, a handful of these might be explained by a negative headline or chalked up to bad luck. But the persistent pattern of stocks falling in the run-up to big insider sales suggests a more widespread problem. Information that should be confidential is getting out. Now on this chart here, you can see how block trades executed by JP Morgan Chase outperformed the market most of the time. However, block trades executed by everybody else underperformed the market most of the time, with Morgan Stanley being the worst offender. This pattern is now at the heart of a federal investigation into whether banks tip off favored clients, also known as hedge funds, to coming block trades. The Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, has sought trading records and electronics communications from a number of big banks and hedge funds, and the U.S. Justice Department is running its own probe. The investigation now appears focused on Morgan Stanley, which is the dominant bank in block trading in recent years. The Wall Street Journal's analysis found that when Morgan Stanley executed a block trade by itself, the median stock price trailed its peers by 0.7 percentage points in the trading session leading up to the deal, meaning half performed worse than that. 
Now, if investment banks such as Morgan Stanley really are leaking this information to hedge funds, how are they doing it without getting caught? Well, leaks could come from a number of sources. First of all, companies tend to approach multiple banks to bid on the block deals, leaving it open to the possibility that somebody other than the winner of the business has leaked the information or has actually shorted the shares themselves. So how does this front running actually work and how does this hurt the people selling the shares but benefit the hedge funds? Well, the investment bank that agrees to do the block trade generally around midday, typically around 1230 in the afternoon, they agree to quietly buy the shares at a discount to the market's closing price later that day. Now, this is important. Keep in mind that the investment bank is going to buy these shares, buys them at a discount to the closing price. So the way this works is, let's say you're a big pension fund and you want to sell a large amount of shares of a particular stock and you contact one of these investment banks in order to do a block trade. You'll typically make that call sometime around noon or 1230. And the investment bank will then say, okay, I agree to buy the shares for 10 cents below whatever the closing price is at the end of the day. And you say, great, I agree. So let's say the stock is currently trading at $10. You expect that come the end of the day that you're going to end up selling the shares for around $9.90. I mean, give or take whatever price fluctuation you end up having in the remaining three and a half hours of trading. But then that investment bank that you just contacted, they call up their buddy over at a hedge fund and they say, hey, hedge fund, I've got somebody who's about to sell a huge amount of shares in this particular stock. And the hedge fund goes, thank you very much for the information. Hangs up the phone. The hedge fund then goes and shorts the stock. Now the share price starts going down. And by the end of the day, the share price is no longer $10. The share price is down $9. Well, you're already in agreement and under contract to sell your shares at a 10 cent discount. So now you as the pension fund have to sell these shares for $8.90 when you thought you were going to be able to sell them for $9.90 because the stock price just dropped all of a sudden out of the blue a whole 10% intraday. Now the question is, what does the investment bank do with these shares that they just bought for $8.90? Well, the bank will then aim to flip the stock to its trading clients at a higher price and pocket the difference. Meaning the next day or in the after hours, the investment bank now goes out to a bunch of people and says, look, the stock just dropped 10%. It's at a huge discount. I'm willing to sell you these shares for $9.20. You want them? And people are like, yeah, I'll take them. I was trading at $10 earlier in the day. It's way undervalued. Sure, I'll buy them. And as they continue to sell these shares and people continue to buy them up and the share price eventually gets uh, back up towards the $10. In addition to that, all of the hedge funds that just shorted the stock are covering their shares after they just took massive profits running the price down from $10 down to $9. So we got all this buying pressure the day after the stock price goes right back up to $10. Who makes money? Well, it's the investment bank that just bought these shares at a huge discount, is now able to sell them much closer to market value. They make a huge amount of money. At the same time, the hedge fund, which just sold short a bunch of shares the day prior, they make a huge amount of money. And who's the big loser? Where does all the money come from? It comes from the pension fund, the person who contacted the investment bank in order to do the block trade. Now I should note that the money also comes from retail traders because as a stock price starts to drop all of a sudden on no news, a lot of retail traders will panic, they'll sell out, they'll capitulate and retail traders will jump in, they'll add to the selling pressure after the hedge funds start to short it, that will cause the share price to go down even more and then the very next day the share price starts to rise back up and all the retail traders are sitting there going, I don't understand. How did I possibly sell at the bottom? I have no clue what's going on. And you don't have any clue what's going on because this is all happening behind the scenes in secret illegally. Regulators suspect that investment banks have been tipping off their top clients who jump in and sell ahead of the wave according to people familiar with the probes. In many deals examined by the Wall Street Journal, the stock price slide began in the late morning or early afternoon around the time sellers typically alert banks to their plans. The ultimate losers in these situations are often pension funds, endowments, and foundations. 
In this image here, you can see nine examples of how days that block trade started, that particular stock that was being sold heavily went down, even though the overall market segment traded flat or went up, even though these block trades are supposed to be secret and nobody's supposed to know about them. And one that I just want to point out here was very heavily invested by retail traders, and that was Unity Software, which on the day of the block trade dropped by 14%, even though the overall information technology segment only dropped by 0.2%. That hurt a lot of retail investors on that day. So why are investment banks and hedge funds willing to use this illegal information in order to front run these sales? Well, obviously, there's a lot of financial incentives to leaking the details ahead of time. Knowing which investors will buy the shares and at what price could help a bank fine tune its bid and decrease its risk of losses, as well as increase its profits. And tipping off top hedge funds to a profitable trade, selling short for a stock heading into a block sale, tends to be a winner. Well, obviously, if you know there's about to be a large amount of selling pressure and you short the stock, that's almost a guaranteed winner. Further, this could curry favor with important clients. Meaning investment banks are willing to provide this illegal information to hedge funds so that the investment banks can get a favor from these hedge funds at some point in the future. And then the Wall Street Journal finishes up with two examples. On August 7th, 2018, shares of Kraft climbed all morning, outperforming the S&P index of other big consumer product companies at the time. And at 12.26 p.m., right around the time that sellers of block trades typically engage banks, the stock price started to fall sharply, closing down 1.6%, lagging the index and costing 3G Capital some $13 million in lost proceeds. In another 3G capital block trade a year later, shares of restaurant brands cratered around noon and closed down 1.8% on a day the index rose. 3G capital lost out on $56 million in proceeds on that particular trade. So to summarize all of this, Pension funds and other large holders of stocks will reach out to investment banks whenever they want to sell a large amount of shares because they want to use the investment bank's dark pools in order to sell the shares so that they don't lose a ton of money by trying to sell on the open market. The investment banks are allegedly, supposedly, hypothetically still being investigated, reaching out to hedge funds and tipping them off to the fact that somebody is about to sell a bunch of shares. Now this benefits the investment bank in a big way because the investment bank is now able to buy the shares from the pension fund at a huge discount at the end of the day. The hedge fund also benefits because they are able to front run the pension fund and they are able to short sell the stock before the pension fund actually sells. And so the hedge fund is able to make money on the way down even before the sale is known to the public. Further, as the price continues to fall, this often causes retail traders to panic and start selling as well, which causes more downward pressure in the stock price. Then, the very next day, after the large investment bank has already bought the shares from the pension fund, the hedge fund will then cover all of their short positions. This will cause the price to start to rise back up. As the price is rising, the investment bank, which now holds a large number of shares, will start selling off those shares to a whole bunch of smaller banks at a huge profit. And so the hedge fund makes money by shorting the stock on the way down. The investment bank makes money by buying the shares at a steep discount and then selling them at a much higher price after the hedge fund covers their short position. And the big loser in all of this is both the pension fund, which has now sold their shares at a steep discount, and retail traders who have panicked, sold out, thinking something must be wrong, only to watch the share price rise back up the day after they sell. Sell. Again, I want to stress that front running and insider trading is illegal, and that is why both the SEC and the U.S. Department of Justice are investigating this crime. 
I also want to stress that this is an ongoing investigation and everything I talked about today is an allegation towards these infractions, but nothing has been proven yet. I do want to stress that everybody is innocent until proven guilty, so we're just going to have to wait and see how the investigation plays out and whether or not anybody gets fined. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. Comment down below what you think about all of this. Also, I wanted to remind you guys that the trade we opened yesterday, which was a short position on QQQ, it's up about 25% today. If you want to know everything that we're buying and selling before I make the trades public on Twitter, you can join the VIP Discord. In the VIP Discord, I post all of my trade alerts before the trades are filled, when the orders are actually placed, so that you know what I'm buying and selling before anybody else does, so that you can jump in on these plays and make money too. We also made money on a few other trades where some of the people in the VIP Discord made over 80% profits today. So again, if you want to join, you want to find out everything we're buying and selling and make a ton of money, you can join the VIP Discord. You can sign up for that at stockcurry.vip slash get VIP. All right, I hope you have a lot of success trading and I will see you tomorrow.